Hey everybody, it's Chris with Spin Sheet. How are you? Thanks for tuning in here. Um, and if you have any comments uh, and questions during our little show here, I would invite you to write them in the uh, in the public section uh, there on Facebook. Um, and now, just before we get started, I want to thank Curtis Stokes and Associates for uh, sponsoring this week's uh, uh, Spin Sheet Happy Hour. Today, we're going to be talking about licensing and certifications. Um, and I actually get to pipe in because I actually have one of those things. Um, so uh, I'm going to bring Molly here uh, on and see how she's doing. There she is. Hey, Molly. Hey, Sharp. Happy Friday to you. How's it going? It's it's good. It's hot. It is. Well, you know, I I, I, uh, I turned the air on in the office a little bit because I was here, I'm here at the Spin Sheet World Headquarters where I'm really technically not working right now. So I came in here. It was really hot. Turned on the air. Yep. And, uh, and you know, I usually call you Sharb, which is a nice shortening of your name. But I think tonight I'm supposed to call you Captain Sharb. You can call me Captain Sharb. Okay, Captain Sharp. I'm, I'm psyched that we're going to talk to uh, Emily Decker from J World, and we're going to talk to Jeff Ewinson, who is a pro sailor who recently got his medical person yeah. on board certification. So we're kind of going the full gamut from beginning sailors to just about as expert as you can be. Yeah, it's going to so. be a lot of fun. Um, I know you know people ask questions about this all the time, and uh, uh, it can be a little bit confusing. But um, I, I think uh, hopefully we'll clear that up for them. Uh, of course, let me just start off. Um, let's bring everybody in, and then we'll talk about what we're drinking. Okay, great. Let's do that. Shake things up. Um, here comes Emily, and here comes Jeff. Perfect. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, Emily, I muted you because there was wind, but I got to hear that you're now, you're now fully gone. So Emily's joining us from outside uh, J World. Um, it's too hot in the J World office. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, I unfortunately am stuck inside um, with the rest of us. But um, uh, before we get started, let's just go around and talk about what we're drinking as we normally do. Um, um, I, I. Hold on, get on, get on. Echo, echo. Emily, echo. if you could do me a favor and mute your computer. Got it. Um, uh, what am I drinking? Oh, so one of the things we're going to be talking about tonight or today is uh, the RYA uh, Yacht Master, which is the Royal Yachting Association. Um, and so I thought in honor of my British uh, certification, my United Kingdom certification, that I would I would have a Guinness. So that's uh, that's what I'm drinking. Um, Molly, what do you got on the on the menu there? Well, I'm uh, I'm sorry, I'm spinning my computer around here. I'm uh, I'm just drinking a little chilled white wine tonight. It was uh, it's portable. It's easy to bring to the office. So rather than mix up some fruity rum drink like I usually do, I stuck with the easy stuff and I just put a little white wine. Excellent. And it happens to be in a uh, in a gray goose cup. I got at some Eastport Yacht Club event. <laughs> oh, sure, it's uh, worth some money. Um, Emily, what are you drinking? I am drinking a fine green Heineken beverage. Tastes in a good. J World koozie. In the J World koozie. Well Absolutely. Done. Very nice. Mr. Johansson? I am drinking a delicious margarita in a nude regatta uh, nice. jug. Yeah? How yeah. Did, and it says first place on it. How did you get first place? Um, there's only two ways to get a jug like this. One of them is to actually win the race. The other one is to be married to the girl who won the race. There, oh, good answer. Good answer. Awesome. Um, cool. Uh, well, normally I bow out, but uh, Molly, how do you want to do it? Well, you know, I I I just got to tell you that I, I I took a peek at Facebook and I'm not sure we're actually live. Oh. <laughs> I don't. It keeps Mary saying says we are. Yes, we oh, are. All right. Well, then, thank you, Mary, for yeah. being more more on it than I am. So, um, Jack, so yeah. What I, what I would like to do is if um if Sharb and, and you and Jeff wouldn't mind uh, hiding out in the green room, I'm just going to ask Emily a couple questions, or we're going to start it more at the beginning for beginning sailors on up to people who want a bare boat charter. 
Excellent. I, I get rid of both of us. So Emily, let's just jump right into it. I know you've been sure. with J World for a long time. And, Six years. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, uh, J World offers U.S. sailing certification there. And if you would just explain for anyone who's out there who might be interested in some sort of certification or doesn't know anything about the world of cert certification, can you, can you kind of give us the range of certifications that you guys offer there? Sure. So U.S. Sailing, um, most people think of U.S. Sailing as the governing body that handles uh, the Olympic teams, um, does a lot of racing, um, that their main focus is on racing. Um, but in, in fact, uh, U.S. Sailing has a very robust certification system for adults learning to sail. Um, it starts with uh, their basic keelboat certification, which is a quite a comprehensive learn to sail um, certification program. It's uh, we here at J World teach it in either 29 or 30, 35 hours, 90% um, of which you're out on the water doing learning and, and learning to sail. Um, we're very into experiential and that's what US sailing likes um, it, with theory classroom theory and all that but you finish that you finish that certification with a, a really solid foundation of how to sail um, and you can confidently start to sail on, by the end of that by the end of that certification and if you pass you're going to be able to sail a, a 25 25 or 26 foot boat confidently knowing what to do in safety situations when you know and knowing everything that you need to know um and then it goes on to what we call kind of more cruising certifications um basic cruising and then where you kind of go on to a boat that has what we call systems engines uh you know electronics through hull galley heads all that right. to the to then you you keep kind of going up the steps and uh, there's bare boat cruising where that's a five day course where you learn soup to nuts, um, everything you, you need to know about bare boat cruising. Mm -hmm. um, and those are kind of the, what we call the big three. Uh, there are other sort of, there are other um, certifications like coastal navigation, um, mm -hmm. which is a very comprehensive, more theory based, um, but, but um, quite a fascinating certification. Um, there's also you know, catamaran, so there's there's more beyond that, but they're all cruising based, so to speak, um, and each one is um, is quite substantive in in its own right. Mm -hmm. Do you um you probably get calls like this? I know I've given a lot of start sailing now seminars with a lot of beginners there, and people ask, "What certifications do I have to get?" If sailing is like I need a driver's license for sailing, and so when people ask you, "What do I have to get?" How do you answer that? Well, so, you know, there's, Lord knows there's plenty of us out there that don't have any certifications and certainly know how to sail well. But if you're starting at the beginning, what you want to start out with is a basic keelboat certification mm -hmm. um, that really is, uh, you know, that really is just the, the, the standard for learning how to sail. Um, it gives you just such a, such a broad, even introduction, but ability to dive into some things and, and you, mm -hmm. you're, you're learning not only the what to do, but why you're doing it. So you can take that with you and continue to build. Um, so that is what we really recommend is, is where novices start. Mm -hmm. So in all the years I've interviewed people from sailing schools, we know that all the good ones seem to either be U.S. Sailing Certifying or their ASA, also known yes. as the American Sailing Association, but we call it ASA in the sailing world. Can That's you tell right. us the difference between the two certifications? So there are two basically certifying bodies, obviously. Um, they both do, you know, that we're, we're, we're teaching the same thing. I mean, learning how to sail, the, the concepts are certainly out there. We're teaching the same concepts. Um, they, ASA's certifications um, are numbered and they tend to break their certifications down a little bit into kind of smaller segments than, than what a U.S. sailing certification is. Um, for example, like the U.S. sailing basic keelboat is, um, is comprised of part of like the ASA 101 and 102 and 103. So it's, they, they tend to kind of break it down a little bit more, um, but they were certainly teaching the same things, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, good. I know people ask me that sometimes. Now, now I know that your your instructors are certified. Um, can you tell me how the, their certifications differ from a student certification? Yes, uh, quite substantial. Um, the U.S. Sailing uh, prides itself on probably one of the most rigorous uh, certification processes for its for its instructors. Um, they are uh, they go through some some really really tough certification criteria. Um, they really only certify the best, um, which is one of the reasons why we J World is a U.S. Sailing. Um, certification school is because of that high standard that they have for their instructors. Mm -hmm. Great. I am um, years ago. Uh, I took the, the U S sailing keelboat instructor course and uh, I'm, I'm kind of a tough, um, I'm kind of a tough student because I've taught a lot of things myself and I think, Oh, I can't sure. be that hard. And I have to say it was a pretty rigorous course and the on the water mm -hmm. stuff. Like I struggled with it. You know, we were picking up a man overboard solo and I just hadn't really done that kind of, it, it was challenging. It was challenging. And, and, there, and we were really studying hard and we had to, to do, um, we had to do practice classes in front of a group and we were graded pretty heavily on it. And it was impressive. I have to say, oh, yeah. the, and I, the, I've heard the ASA one is pretty good too, but my only experience has been with the U S sailing one. It was very good. So well, what we call the BKI instructors, um, they're some of the toughest sailors out there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, locally, I don't know, you know, Nancy Haberland and Charlie arms are two of the BKI oh instructors yeah. and they are tough, tough, um, tough, tough instructors, and they really, really demand nothing but perfection. Um, and it's, you know, it's a tough course. To, the, our instructors really have to go through a lot to, to, yeah. to get that to get that instructor certification. So all the students who come in for your your beginner keelboat classes, do they have to go through the U.S. Sailing certification, or can they, they opt do. out of? No. So we do have, um, you know, it's it's a because it's a longer class. It's it, it's it's a pretty big commitment. We do have a smaller segment um, that we call Sailing Fundamentals, and that is a two-day program. It's a learn to sail. You are starting out on the boat once again, though, um, and you're and you're learning basic boat handling. Uh, you're still going to be learning the basic theory of sail trim and balance, but it's it's more of a um, kind of more of a just strictly how to sail a boat. We're, we don't dive too much into man overboard. Uh, at, you know the the basics of, of you know coastal navigation things like that that we do in our in our basic keelboat certification um but the but the nice thing is the way we've put it together is um the those first two days that we call our sailing fundamentals actually apply if you want to continue and continue on to your basic keelboat certification so um so there is a kind of a smaller one even if you just want to try it out um it's a great two-day learn to sail program Great. Um, when when I used to do the Start Sailing Now seminars, there was always, you know, always the the overachiever in the front room, you know. And in every seminar I've ever given, there was always the guy who was like, "How can?" And I remember this guy asking me, "How can in the shortest time possible, can I get the equivalent of a graduate degree in sailing?" And well, um, it's so and, that's a that's a good question. Um, yeah. So. It's, um, you know, if, if you, what I'll, what I'll use is um, the, if you want to go out, like have and just suddenly be able to go anywhere in the world, charter a boat, I want to go off to the Mediterranean, charter a boat or whatever, the, the rules of the rules have changed a little bit and you now have to be licensed in order to uh, bear boat charter anything. Um, and in order to have that, uh, you need what's called an international proficiency certificate. Um, and once you have what we call an IPC, you can literally go anywhere in the world. It's a recognized standard. You can uh, charter anywhere. Um, it is required. It's not necessarily required in the Caribbean, but just about every place else in the world it is. Um, that certificate is comprised of three, three U.S. sailing certifications the basic keel boat, the basic cruising, and the bare boat cruising. If you have that, the IPC is simply an administrative, you know, you go and fill out a form and pay your $40, $50 and you got it. Right. However, there are plenty of sailors out there that may very well have been sailing all of their life and have never taken a course. Um, 
you know, some it's quite frankly, somebody like like Jeff Ewenson, um, you know, who's who's a fantastic sailor, has done you know miles and miles offshore, knows what he's doing. He doesn't want to go spend a ton of money to go take all three of these courses in order to in order to get these things. We have what we call an IPC challenge, and you come in and you test out and you challenge these three certifications, mm-hmm. and you take the test. We do a little on the water evaluation. And we determine, yep, you're certified. We will certify those three. And it takes a, a matter of like two days to do it. So yeah. um, so we've got the short track to get you to get our the more experienced sailors out on the water chartering mm-hmm. if they need to or something like that. Yeah, that's good to know. Because I know that the, uh, the old joke about charter companies used to be they'd take anyone with a pulse and a credit card. Right. And right. Uh, that, that's just not the case. That's just not the case anymore. And, and who knows, maybe it is sometimes in the BVI, but the couple of times that I've chartered, they, they've wanted pretty extensive resumes of the people on board. And uh, oh, sure. luckily I was there with a bunch of boat owners of 40 foot plus boats. So, in a, you know, maybe and we've, a- we've heard stories of somebody getting to the, you know, getting over to Croatia, getting ready to step on their boat. And the, the office says, Oh, no, I'm so sorry um, you need this, but no worries. I have a captain around the corner and we're convinced oh. this is the nephew. <laughs> Only a couple like, thousand more dollars. Like a bait and switch that, yes, we can we can put this captain on that so that you can, you know, for that you can go. So it's it's a good idea to, you know, you, you have to have this now if you want to go anyplace. <laughs> yeah, especially in Europe. Um, yes, are, are there any questions from the audience that, that need to be asked of Emily right now? Or, or should we, um, uh, I just want to ask you emily do you do you have any certifications i do i have everything up through my international proficiency certificate okay yeah how about a captain's license i do not i do not um i had tracked my miles for years and um kind of had to step away from sailing for a while so i i don't um but i do have my ipc so that if we if you know, so that so that when we do finally plan to get over to the med and go cruising um we can do so well, good. Well, um, well, thank you, Emily. We're going to bring you back at the end. So if anyone has a question, they think, oh, geez, I should have asked that. That woman from J World, I should have asked her that question. <laughs> You're going to have another chance before we before we Perfect. go away. So um, so next, I'm going to ask um, Captain Sharp a few questions about it, having recently gotten his captain's license. And then, Jeff, we're going to bring you back when we're done talking about captain's licenses to talk about some medical stuff. So Emily, Jeff are going back to the green room. It's yeah, so, and it's just there they go. It's and like it's old just, times. <laughs> just like just like old times. <laughs> so uh so early I I I earlier I sent you some questions and one of them was so tell us how you got your Royal Yacht Master. Royal and, Yacht Masters. And then, yeah. then he wrote back, it's the Royal Yacht Association Yacht Master. Yeah. So yeah. uh so anyway. Yacht. Tell us how, um, I mean, I don't know that many people who, who go and get that first. I, I think I've met a couple of people who have had their captain's license and they've had an opportunity to go to Europe or something like that. And they've gotten that one, but you're the only one I know who did it in a reverse order. So yeah. why don't you tell us about how you came to get your YRA Yacht Master? Well, I think it needs to start out with having a job that you absolutely hate. And <laughs> all you want to do is go sailing. Um, and that's kind of where I, I got the bug. Um, I, I had done one offshore trip and I fell in love with the idea of trying to make a living sailing. And, um, I, but I, what I really wanted to do was do something international. Um, I, I love to travel and, um, I had, you know, these, these lofty goal, dreams and goals of, being a skipper of a super yacht somewhere and um, and getting paid to sail um, as young and naive as I was at the time. Um, and uh, what I discovered um, and kind of leading off of what Emily was talking about was um, on an international basis, the, the RYA Yacht Master is much more recognized than the US Coast Guard captain's license. Um, and uh, you, you'll see that requirement a lot if you want to work on a foreign flag vessel, which most of them are. Um, and so I, I had barely 2,000 ocean miles under my belt from the offshore passage that I had taken 
And that's the minimum requirement to get your RYA. And uh, I, you know, I, I was kind of having a midlife crisis at 32 and I sold it. It's a third life crisis, I think. Yeah, it's a third of the life crisis. I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure how long I was going to make it, to be honest. <laughs> um, so uh, what I said, what I ended up doing is I, you know, I, I sold my car and all of my furniture and all that stuff. And um, I packed my bags and I went, I went over to the UK um, and I went through this zero to hero program um, at, uh, at UKSA, United Kingdom Sailing Academy. And it's right there on the Isle of Wight um, in the Solent, which is a, it's a heck of a place to learn all of this. Um, and you basically spend 10 days sailing, 10 days in the classroom, 10 days sailing, 10 days class. It, it is, it was a remarkable experience. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up after getting my yacht master, um, uh, working for a little while on, on deliveries and some charter work. Um, and, uh, I won't go through the sad details, but I got hired to join a, a, a Swan, uh, 55, uh, as skipper replacing somebody. And, um, I ended up, uh, getting, I ended up flying back to the States before that job started. And, uh, I was, uh, I was told the current skipper is not leaving. So oh. I got stuck in the States, but the, the happy ending is that I, because of all of that, um, I threw another job offer, but through the dark world of corporate work, um, got hired, but and ended up here in Annapolis. So if that wouldn't have happened, I would, ne I would never be here. And, and oh, I'll see you the happy ending then. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the Yacht Master certification and and kind of what you get out of it. Did, did, did it really improve your seamanship skills as well as your overall broader knowledge? Can you just kind of give us an idea of some of the things you did to yeah. earn it? So so the, the British are fanatical about being a yachtsman. Um, it's a real thing. Like that's a, that's a big deal. Um, whereas, uh, you know, in the States, the, the U S coast guard merchant, uh, merchant mariner credential is really more like, um, uh, industrial commercial business. This is more, you know, I'm on a yacht. I, I know how I, I'm a, I'm a, I know all my rules and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so we went through, uh, you know, all your navigation um, and uh, did a ton of work where you do fire safety. Like we actually went into a, 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 con a container that was fully engulfed in flames with an oil fire and they make you go in there. And like we did all sorts wow. of fun stuff like that. You know, got to throw an aerosol can into fire and, you know, show demonstrate why you don't put water on an oil fire, that kind of stuff. Um, so we did all of those things, and um, and all the while you, like I said before, you're going out at sea for ten days and coming back. There's just much more emphasis on the skills. Um, the Solent has about a, a ten to twelve uh, foot tidal difference in some places, mm -hmm. and you're learning how to time your entry into certain places. Um, you know. It is, it is truly one of the best places you can learn uh, how to sail. And um, I, I, I really can't say enough about it, except that it, it was, um, it, it was a, a great comprehensive program. Um, but, you know, in, in the States, the, 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 I took four and a half, almost five months off, you know, just going and doing that. And mm -hmm. You know, here I think you can get that experience, but it'll be in pieces. Um, I don't know of a, and I might be completely wrong, but if you, you know, if you can't spend four or five months off, um, it, it can be difficult to put that together. Mm -hmm. So, um, just recently, you got your captain's license, and yeah, the um, uh, why'd you do that again? <laughs> I'm just thinking, like I don't, I don't know why you, 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 and I, you're not well. And and if you plan to leave spin sheet and go be a boat captain, you can't really admit that. Yeah, I was like, the rumors. So I guess you're just gonna have to lie to me if that's the I'm case. Uh, <laughs> no, I. You know, it's funny is that the yacht master isn't recognized in the states 
I mean, I, they, it's not like I can go to the Coast Guard and say, hey, look what I've got, you know, can you just give me my captain's license? It doesn't work. Yeah, I know some people who have tried that and they've yeah. been kind of ticked. Like, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, the Yacht Master is like, that's, that's, that's worldwide, world renowned. And you're not, you're not going to just give me the uh, equivalent and uh, oh, yeah. answer with, no, we don't, we don't care if you're British. And, and I, I've never tested this, but someone told me that if, like the, the Yacht Master, I could walk into a, a pharmacy now, not an American pharmacy, I'm sure, but uh, show the credential and they would give you medicines without a prescription for the vessel. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, but no, I, I got it mainly at the time. I was like, I just want, I just, is a feather in the cap kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, it was just, I was actually having to renew my Yacht Master, um, which I thought was going to require me to do a whole, to take the test again and all that stuff. And it ended up not, but I was ended up starting to study for it. Um, and I just said, hey, why not? It's a nice thing to have. And um, if I ever wanted to do a delivery where somebody would require a captain's license, I would, I would have it. Got that. Um, and it's good for five years, right? It's good for five years. And um, I took the, I took uh, the test. I'll give a shout out to um, the uh, Mariners Learning System, their Captain in a Box Learn Online thing. It was really good. It was it was comprehensive. Took the test. Um, you just really need to know your rules of the road, which is the international uh, co you know, collision regulations, and um, and the rest of it is sort of like I said, more commercially based. Mm -hmm. uh, had a you know. You, you feel like you'd be more like a stevedore kind of like, you know, you're a, you're a deckhand on a container vessel after, uh, after going through that course. Um, it's not really something that you're going to learn how to sail a boat with. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, I think some of the courses that U.S. Sailing and ASA probably will, will do a, a lot better job. Like I wouldn't recommend you just going out to take your, your, get your captain's license and you don't have a lot of experience on a sailboat or, or any vessel for that matter. Yeah. Well, you have to have the hours to do you it, right? How many hours did you have to log? You know, it's different. Um, it, it is, well, it's, yeah, it is hours. It was like three, I don't even know what the value, I should know, I just got it. Um, it's a lot, it's a yeah. lot. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, I had what they wanted. Uh, yeah. But it's a different way to. I, I always recorded my my miles because that was the the way the yacht master did. And the Coast Guard wants hours at sea, uh, which is completely different. But luckily, if you do the conversion, then it's fine. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, I think both achieving both just depends on what you want to do. You know, yeah. if you want to work internationally, I will rec recommend the Yacht Master. If you want to work uh, in charter here in the States um, or as a delivery skipper or um, if you want to get aboard a tug, you know, to be a deckhand, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely going to want to go through that step with uh, the Coast Guard license. Mm -hmm. So, um do you think you'll ever use it professionally? Do you have any vision for it? Way, way in the future, way, way in the future. My dream job is to be the guy in the water taxi in Annapolis. So, you know, until one of those open up, you're safe. Yeah, um, well, you know, that that's apparently a very sought after job. You know, we know that because a friend of ours went to, went to an information session on there and, uh, you know, those guys just don't land the sweet water taxi hours immediately. There's a there's yeah. a hierarchy, you know. Oh yeah, you gotta know somebody to get that job. Yeah. Well no, no, I think you just have to stick around and, and uh <laughs> you have to be the 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 tour boat guy for a while or you have to be a hand on the harbor queen or you know the yeah. you, you you don't go for the 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 sweet water taxi job because everybody wants that job. It's really it, it's a nice job to have if you're a people person. The only the only job I think might be a little bit better than that is being the uh, the guy that controls the drawbridge at Spot Creek. Um, <laughs> you, you've always wanted to be that I guy. Be that. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, if anyone has any questions for Captain Sharb, um, you can uh, put the put them in the the Facebook thread. We're gonna just shift gears and we're gonna bring on 
Um, Jeff, you and then we're going to bring Sharb and Emily back at the end in, in case anybody has any final questions. But so, um, so I just want to say Linda Gunn piped in and she says it's 360 days for uh, the inland uh, captain's license. All right, Captain Linda, thank you very much for that information. I, I should have come armed with that information. I didn't. I didn't. Anyway, here, I'll get. Uh, you hey, know. it's happy hour. It's not a test. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, here comes Jeff. There he is. All right. So Jeff, you and I are going to have a little deja vu here. D Jeff and I had a conversation for those of you who didn't see it. We had a conversation for an Annapolis Yacht Club crowd this week about his his uh, medical education and how it all came about. So uh, so let's just go over that again, Jeff. We're, you know, we don't have nearly as much time, so you don't have to give as many details. Right. I, I think but that then, medical education is a little bit of a, a misnomer. I, I basically, yeah. uh, I took a, a crash course in, uh, you know, the se seven, seven days of medical school, start to finish. So well, before, before you get to that, let's start with, what sparked your interest in getting any sort of a certification to be a medical person on board? I, I know you're an offshore sailor, so you might want to, yeah. those who don't know, you should know a little bit about your, your offshore sailing history and, uh, and how, you know, what, what made you interested in it? Cause you, cause you're not, you know, you weren't a science major. No, far from a science major. Um, in fact, I think my, my mother would say that I majored in sailing, uh, in college, <laughs> uh, certainly, she wouldn't be entirely wrong. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of offshore sailing and uh, both, you know, from starting out as like a young pickup bowman to um, eventually getting to a point where I was in a position to be putting teams together and, and serving as a, a sort of team manager for um, yacht owners. And um, one of the things that I always uh, either – I ask the question or I consider if I'm putting a team together, but if I've been asked to be part of a team, one of the first questions that I ask is, uh, who's the medic on board? And I don't necessarily mean, you know, a board certified surgeon, but you know, who has medical training? And uh, the second question that really comes from my wife is who on board is capable of turning around and picking you up in all conditions at night uh, if you fall overboard? So if I can answer both of those questions in a good way, then I'm typically allowed to go and do the offshore race that I do. Um, and I would say that, uh, you know, I had a, a basic CPR and first aid training um, that I know U.S. sailing requires uh, of any um, uh, certified instructor, which at one point in my life, I was a certified junior sailing instructor. Uh, but beyond that, I actually don't have any other uh, licenses or certifications. I just have a lot of hands-on experience. Um, and so I had my uh, CPR and first aid. Uh, I had kept that current. And I found myself in a position where uh, somebody at a an event where I was participating um, was having a cardiac arrest. And I found myself on a team of people that performed CPR. And I in no way was the quarterback of that team. I pretty much just uh, subbed in when it was, uh, when it looked like somebody should take over and, and do compressions. Um, so I was able to do compressions. And as it turned out, it was on a very good friend of mine. And there was a very successful outcome. Uh, I won't get into the gory details, but he's alive and well, uh, husband, three kids, um, and, and yeah, he's, he's doing great. So that sort of uh, opened my eyes a little bit to the fact that I would like to be confident enough that in that situation, again, I could quarterback that team and would feel comfortable in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that led me to taking the... Um, wilderness and offshore medical first responder course, which was offered through Cruisers University at uh, the United States Sailboat Shows, which uh, happened last fall here every fall, but the commonly known as the Annapolis Boat Shows. Um, 
Kruger University offered this course in uh, wilderness and offshore first responding. And it's taught by um, two medical professionals. It was a class of maybe 20 or so people. And um, it's a three day course. Uh, you start early in the morning, break for lunch, but it goes all day. It ends up being uh, the equivalent of a 40 hour course. And that was my sort of next step after, uh, after CPR and basic CPR and first aid. Um, having gone through that, uh, the next step after that was sort of unknown to me until um, I heard about the uh, uh, U.S. Coast Guard medical first, or sorry, medical person in charge course. Uh, and I took that through maritime professional training, which MPT is based in Fort Lauderdale. And that was a seven day course over nine days. Uh, so, and part of that course uh, included going and spending an entire day in the emergency room at Broward County uh, Emergency, or Broward County Medical Center, which was right there in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. uh, so really sort of getting into the, the real nitty gritty of, of what emergencies actually look like and how they're handled on a professional level. Um, and, and there was just a lot of, a ton of, between those two courses, a ton of hands-on uh, skill set building that really made me feel a lot, make me feel a lot more comfortable in the idea of uh, responding to any kind of a medical situation on board if there's no doctor present. Obviously, I would prefer to be the, uh, the second in charge and have a real medical doctor, somebody that's... Yeah. And spent a lot of money at crew med school, uh, and I'd be happy to, uh, you know, be their backup. But in the case of uh, in the case of that not being the situation, I'd be comfortable um, helping somebody out. So when you say helping somebody out, can you give us kind of a a range of some of the things that you would now be comfortable doing or, or uh, uh, assisting well, with on a boat? Maybe I would have false confidence, you know, especially if, if I'd had a, a nice margarita in hand, I'd have a lot of confidence. Um, but the, uh, the skill sets that we sort of worked on and learned, um, everything from suturing and stapling, uh, reducing dislocations, um, to catheterization and putting in NG tubes and you know, uh, splinting and, and dealing with, you know, more than just your run of the mill cuts. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of discussion on what medications to give and how to talk to a uh, radio medic. So if you're offshore and you find yourself in a position where you can't just get on the phone or get on the radio and call the coast guard and expect, you know, a response within the next 20 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. more than that distance away. Um, it's, it's, you're not just going to give somebody a band aid and, and sort of say, okay, everything's going to be fine because they're on their way They're They might be on their way, but it might be 24 hours or more yeah. before they're going to get there. And, and so, um, being able to go through and, and have the skill sets to, uh, be comfortable dealing with a situation and have the demeanor where you can get on the radio and talk to a radio medic, somebody, whether that's through the Coast Guard or through a, um, a subscription radio medic protocol that uh, you rearrange prior to going offshore. Um, you know, having the confidence to go through and, and discuss, you know, certainly not as peers, uh, but as somebody that's not a complete neophyte, uh, right. that, that, that's probably going to have a better outcome and you're going to get good advice um, and being able to just follow through on that advice. So have you had any kind of emergency situation? <laughs> really distracting me. <laughs> this, uh, this screen, the, the strength on here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you had any, um, have you had any emergency situations for which you've had to use any of that? Since I have not yet, thankfully. Yeah. I mean, with the exception of the, the, the good friend of mine who, um, 
honestly, it, it was it was a good few minutes of me doing chest compressions before I clued in to who it was. Um, but no, beyond that, uh, I've been on board when people have dislocated their shoulders or they've had big cuts, but never in an offshore setting where uh, you really had to deal with it on your own. We've always been able to um, call in a, a medic boat or you know, first aid boat or a coach boat and, and offload the, um, the victim we'll say, or the, you know, whoever the person is and get them in, uh, to land pretty quickly. So, um, no, uh, like I said, uh, the last time we did this, I hope to never have to do any of this. I don't want to have to even yeah. deal with a dislocated shoulder. Um, certainly I don't want to have to, uh, you know, put a, put a bit of leather in somebody's teeth and after chit, you know, after a shot of rum and say, okay, now I'm going to stitch you up. Uh, <laughs> I might take the shot of rum before I do the stitch up, keep the hands, you know, <laughs> exactly. uh, no, it, it is something that, um, I think it's, it's really, it's, it's really important at the very, very least that everybody who goes anywhere on a sailboat should have basic, first aid and CPR. Uh, and, and you know, we're not getting any younger. CPR is, is not difficult. Um, and they do teach uh, hands only CPR. So if you get a little squeamish about giving somebody mouth to mouth, you know, when I was first taught CPR or the, you know, the time before uh, the incident that I was a responder, uh, we were taught hands only uh, CPR. And that's what we did. And, and it was successful, you know, and, and I can tell you, uh, this, this person, this friend of mine, um, was from the time that he went down to the time that he finally had been cleared at the catheter lab of, of the blockage. It, it was over 45 minutes unquestionably. And until the ambulance arrived, um, there, there was, there were no breaths. There was just uh, chest compressions, mm -hmm. and you know when the when the EMTs arrived, when the ambulance arrived, and they actually put a breathing bag on him. That's that would be the first time that he was getting positive ventilation, um, mm -hmm. and, and that it was a while between when he when we started doing compressions and when they arrived. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, it was a very successful outcome. He, 100% cleared. He's gone on to world championships and uh, and do quite well. Yeah. Um, so, um, just two quick questions. Yep. One, um, I'm not sure if you mentioned it. How long this class was that you took down in Fort Lauderdale, right. and uh, okay. and how long your certification lasts before you? And as you answer that, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something with this window blind. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so the the um. The first course that I took was the one at Cruises University during the um, during the United States sailboat shows. That was a three day course, forty hours, um, and that That's you so need good. to take that in order to qualify to do the uh, U.S. Coast Guard Medical Person in Charge course, the MPIC course, which I took at MPT maritime professional training uh down in fort lauderdale uh that was a thursday friday so i flew down on a wednesday uh thursday friday then you get saturday sunday off and then monday through friday the next week so it is seven days over the course of nine days and it is just like going to school i mean it's you know, be there at 8.30 in the morning and you're done by around 4.30 in the afternoon. And um, one entire day is spent at the uh, emergency room shadowing uh, the doctor and the head nurse on duty that day. So um, it, it was an incredible uh, experience and they did a really nice job of really going through I, I sort of half kiddingly say it's like med school in seven days. Um, you know, I don't know that my brother-in-law who's an ER doc would say I have any background in medicine at all. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, it, it is, it, it is a confidence uh, builder to be able to go and do that. And then at the end uh, they have a final exam and you have to pass the final exam. And I was, you know, of my class, not a very big class, but of my class, I got the highest grade. So I was pretty happy about hey, that. Hey, way to go. Yeah. yeah. So we did have a, a question from the audience. Um, Shard, yep. were you going to pop that up there or should I just go ahead and ask it? Um, someone was asking about your advice on having AEDs on board a sailboat. Yeah. Um, so having an AED is fantastic. I think um, uh, the misconception, though, is that the AED is like a get out of jail free card. So I think having an understanding for what it does um, is pretty important. I would absolutely say if you have the space and you've taken the time to learn the basics of how to use an AED, then absolutely 100% I would have one on board. Um, but understand, uh, in the situation that my friend found himself in, an AED would not have, did not have anything to do with, um, with, with saving him. Um, because he had a blockage, uh, the AED really just deals with the electrical side and restarts the heart if you're having an electrical issue. If you're having a plumbing issue, it can't really go in and catheterize the, um, the left anterior descending artery, which is the blockage that my friend had. Um, so I, I think it's absolutely uh, a good idea to have an AED on board. Um, and know how to use it, um, but understand that AEDs, uh, they, they, they're a great tool, but they are not the uh, sort of control-alt-delete button that TV portrays them to be. Um, and, and so, you know, had this, uh, had this blockage happened to my friend in an offshore situation, he would have died. And there, there's no question. The only thing that saved him was a cath lab and, um, and incredible doctors, uh, that took over after, after we got him to them, um, mm -hmm. of which, uh, you know, it, thankfully we live in a small town. I see some of those doctors, um, and not just, not just my relatives that are the doctors, but some mm -hmm. others regularly around town. And it's pretty cool to, you know, sort of smile and say, hey, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the short the, sh the short answer that I should have given as opposed to the long rambling that I did is, yes, I would absolutely have an AED on board, uh, mm -hmm. but understand that it's not the, it's not the uh, get out of jail free card. That's great. Well, I'm, uh, I'm really glad that your friend made it through and is thriving. And, uh, right. and thank, thank you for sharing your experience. We're at last call here, so it'd be nice to bring everybody back up and uh, kind of have a, a final question for each of you. Social? Can we do a social? Yeah, social. yeah, let's do that, let's do that. <laughs> I moved on to one. Yeah, uh, well, I, um, I, I still can't figure out the blind in here, so I'm, I'm not giving you a full tour of the <laughs> World Headquarters here, which is very glamorous. Like, you know what I really need? Like, I need some sort of a green screen behind me to make this all a fancier thing. I keep thinking I'm going to bring like a, like a, um, my Caribbean sarong or something and hang it on the wall behind me. But so far, we it, haven't quite gotten it, it there. It should be said that everybody on the screen now has some direct association to spin sheet, both uh, historically and presently. Yes, this is true. Right. This is true. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I, I I only married in, but I, I was there to know that Emily was early one of the early adopters. Yeah, that's awesome. Second employee ever. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I was a charter employee, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, which was uh, yeah, like twenty-five years ago, oh, wasn't it? Twenty-four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably ninety-five, maybe ninety-four. Yeah. Yeah. So any I have a. Uh, any story you want to share, Emily, about the beginning days of Spin Sheet that might be embarrassing? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Every day was an adventure. <laughs>
So, um, so I, I have uh, just sort of one one question I wanted to ask all of you, and uh, and we'll start with Jeff, and then we'll start with Jeff. We'll go back. We'll with Jeff talk to Sharb, and then Emily. But if you, if if anyone listening to this talk, you know, was was their interest was by what you had to say, what would you recommend to them? I I, I know you said everyone needs to get uh, first aid and CPR, but beyond that, what would you recommend to them? Well, certainly that's the biggest one. I mean, I I can't. I cannot stress that enough. And, and it, it, you would just hate to be in a situation where you could have helped somebody with just the basic CPR and yet you had to be a bystander. So I can't stress that enough. Um, and, and secondly, um, well, going back, I, I got to hear what, what Emily had to say, and I guess I have to sign up because I don't have any licenses or really any certifications that are current anymore. So I'm going to have to go over and sign up to get mine because uh, I think at this point I might like to go go away cruising somewhere. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think, uh, you know, the, if, if you ever go on to a, a, a trip, uh, whether it's cruising, uh, somewhere, somewhere amazing like Croatia or down in the islands or something like that. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to know who's the medic in charge. And, mm -hmm. and if the answer that you come up with isn't a good one, maybe take it on yourself. And mm -hmm. that's sort of how I came to where I am. Great. Thanks. How about you, Sharp? What about someone who's thinking, I might want to get a captain's license or I might want to go get my r y a yacht master <laughs> did i do that right it just you need to say it with a with an accent uh the -Y -A, i don't i got it. i can't yeah. i can only do french <laughs> <laughs> um I, you know i i think the 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 big misconception is that you can take one of these tests and you're ready to go and you're just not there's nothing that beats experience and so uh, you know, I, I joke about the Zero to Hero program. I got to tell you, it was as, as much of a, an experience as it was, I was scared to death and even still I'm a little scared to death um, about, you know, going offshore and or especially someone paying me to do that sort of thing. Like you've you've really you need miles, you need hours out there. And, uh, you know, the I, I, you know, I, I talked a lot about um the yacht master and, and and one of the things that I thought was critical was that there's a practical, um, and I had to find what you know one of the one of the practicals that we did was uh, and, and when I say it was a practical we had a an, a an examiner on the boat for almost thirty hours, and uh, we you know we ate and slept to well, didn't sleep but you know what I mean uh, we. <laughs> We ate, we ate together, and we we like I had to find an unlit buoy in the middle of the night, like three o'clock in the morning, in a fog. Like those are trying to do that and knowing how to do it is, uh, you know, is invaluable. You you can take any test you want and you'll pass it with flying colors, but until you really have the experience and and are tested, um, you know, it that's worth its weight. Uh, more than any kind of piece of paper that you might have. So I would encourage anybody to do anything, you know, it, it, you know, it's great to have the credential and, you know, it, it, it's kind of fun to have you call me Captain Sharp, but Captain Sharp. Yeah. But beyond that, um, I, I would say go out there, get on the water, talk to people that have been out there, talk to people that, um, that have that experience and, um, you know, leave your ego on the dock because um, it, 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 it is all about experience. It's not about the credential you hold. I have, I have a feeling Emily might be echoing some of what you have to say. How about you, Emily? When, when someone wants to get some sort of sailing school certifications, what, what would be a, your advice to them? Other than sign up with you. Well, <laughs> other than sign up with us. Well, the good news is um, there are, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, licenses and certifications to, to, to really experience it. The good news is there, there really are two pathways. If, if you're, if you are new, there's a logical pathway of certification courses that you take to go through to earn that experience, time on the water, 
Um, and it's a natural progression once you have all of the appropriate certifications that you would earn that international proficiency cert certification. Um, so it's good news for people that are new to sailing. There is a pathway to get it and it doesn't seem all that intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, for those of us with a lot of experience, you know, Jeff being one of them, um, you know, there's an, there is a fast way to do it because there is no reason for somebody with as much experience like Jeff has. Um, you know, we had Dick Neville come in and test out, um, because he wanted a charter, uh, you know, so those, so those really, really experienced people that don't have the certification, there is also a fast track to be able to do that in just a, you know, a day or two. So the good news is there's a way to do it for everybody to, to get there, so to speak. So the, um, the time that I did get that question from the overachiever guy and in the front row, ooh, ooh, he said, uh, you know, I want to get a, I want the, the, get the master's degree in sailing and in, 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 in as fast a period as possible. What, what would you recommend to me? The, uh, the answer that was given was fantastic. And I actually think it was an instructor from J world. And he said, <laughs> I would recommend that you do get every certification there is out there, but mm -hmm. I don't recommend that you do it as fast as possible. Because right. you really go get your keelboat 101 and then practice with it for go a year. sailing and then yes, maybe go absolutely. get the other one and then practice yep. it for a while and then go get another one and and, and, and but he he essentially said it well he said the experiential part of sailing is so much more important than the piece of paper and yes. once you get on a boat you'll you'll know why you'll know why and you're that. and you're you know we've all been kind of on the same theme of you really don't you're really not you don't know what you know until you're really tested in a situation and just how good you're able to apply what you've learned. Um, you really, you really have to go out there and experience sailing in all conditions in order to, to in order to, you know, have that confidence, so to speak. Well, great. Well, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, you're Captain welcome. Sharb for joining us and sharing some of your knowledge. Um, we're going to take this for, if you have any non-Facebook friends who are sorry they missed that, we'll, we'll put this up on YouTube eventually. We also had um, in the April issue of Spin Sheet, there, there are a couple of articles about certification and that's online at spinsheet.com. And, uh, and the certification article is also up on spinsheet.com. So um, thank you guys for sharing your knowledge. Cheers. Cheers. Hopefully we'll... We'll have you join us at next week's happy hour when we are going to talk about racing as a couple. So we'll be here at five o'clock on Friday. We are planning to to come through. <laughs> racing as a couple, right? My <laughs> husband and I sail great together. Actually, right? Jeff, it's more like sailing. this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we do, for, for anyone out there watching, we do plan on keeping this five o'clock Friday night um, time slot until the time where we decide that, well, maybe we'd be better off switching it to a different time. So if you have an opinion on that, feel free to put it into the comment thread. And otherwise I would say, thank you guys. Happy, have a happy, have a happy, safe weekend. And Sharp might weekend. want to say a couple of words and get rid of us again. So bye everybody. Have a great weekend. I'm going to send you guys in the green room, but stick around. We uh, The party in the green room is usually awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to stick around. Um, no, real quick, people, I, I, I did want to say thank you, um, and th uh, thanks to our sponsor, Curtis Stokes. Um, I hope you found this to be entertaining and informational. Um, next week, obviously, we are going to do the couples sailing, which I think is going to be entertaining. Uh, uh, we've got we've got a great lineup, so please tune in for that. Um, more importantly, uh, share with your friends. Say, hey, you guys are going to need to check out the Spin Sheet Happy Hour. Um, it, again, we're going to keep it here at Friday at five o'clock. Uh, we hope that's a good time. Uh, and until maybe things change a little bit more, if we need to change it up, we will. But we, um, for right now, this is where it's going to stay. So thanks for tuning in, um, and uh, thanks for being Spin Sheet followers. And have yourselves a safe, healthy, and uh, fun weekend. Get out in the water. Thanks. Don't miss another Spin Sheet video. Subscribe to our channel today.